Now, when blood is pushed into the ventricles, then the ventricles are designed to to contract on a three-dimensional network to decrease their volume to push blood out. So internally, we can see that three-dimensional pattern of branching fibers that's unique to cardiac muscle. And if we look at this, it looks very similar to what we saw in spongy muscle with little bridges interconnecting. And so recall that the, the bridges in spongy muscle are called trabeculae, so these are going to be called trabeculae. But to, to identify them as part of the heart, we're going to refer to them as trabeculae carne, and then that tells us they're actually part of the heart. Then we also have this inner ventricular septum, which separates the right and left ventricle. Posterior to the aorta, we also have a septum back in here that separates the two atria, so that would be our inner atrial septum. If you look in the model here, you can see a depressed area right here, and that's called the fossa ovalis. The fossa ovalis is another remnant of fetal circulation. So in the fetus, this is a hole that allowed blood to move from the right atrium into the left atrium. So it's called the foramen ovale. And then it, it closes off at birth. Sometimes that process takes a little time. And at first, babies can have a little hole in their heart. If so somebody says, well, my baby has a hole in the heart, then they're referring to the fact that this foramen ovale didn't completely close off and become the ductus, uh, the fossa ovale. And then babies can be cyanotic or, or blue because there are mixed oxygenated and deoxygenated blood together. The other pattern that we'll see, and it's, it's, it's a pattern that we see in the atria, is we can also see a pattern of, of interconnecting myocardial fibers that create kind of a similar pattern, but not to the extent that we saw down here with the trabeculate carne. So these are called pectinate muscles when we see them in the atria of the heart. So one of the things that you need to work on when you're looking at the heart is how the heart works with blood flow. So if we started with blood returning to the heart, then the blood would return to the right atrium via the superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava, and a large blood vessel that drains the heart itself on the back of the heart which is called the coronary sinus. All of that blood would enter the right atrium, pass through the tricuspid valve, and enter the right ventricle. When the right ventricle contracts, the blood is going to push, be pushed up into this blood vessel, which is a pulmonary trunk. Now, because we, the ventricle is going to work on positive pressure, when it's contracting and pushing blood into this blood vessel. When the ventricle begins to relax, it's going to create a negative pressure. So we have to have another one-way valve at the bottom of our major arteries that are coming off the ventricles. So if we look inside of the anterior aspect of this model, we'll see a valve right here that actually has three parts to it. So it's called a semilunar valve. And this semilunar valve is in the the base of the pulmonary trunk. So this would be the pulmonary or pulmonic semilunar valve. As blood passes through the pulmonic semilunar valve, it's going to enter the pulmonary trunk. It's going to go to the left and right pulmonary arteries and go out to the lungs. And then all the lung blood coming back from the lungs is going to come back to the heart through the right pulmonary veins as we turn it around the left pulmonary veins. And all of that blood is going to enter the left atrium. The blood is then going to pass through the, the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle. When the left ventricle contracts, then it's going to be pushed through another semilunar valve. So this valve at the base of the aorta is the aortic semilunar valve. And then right above the aortic semilunar valve are where the two coronary arteries come off the aorta that feed the heart itself. So the heart takes its first choice of this oxygenated blood. 
and then the blood would be passed via the ascending aorta to the aortic arch, and then would go to your head via the brachiocephalic, left common carotid, and left subclavian to the shoulder. So when we're looking at our coronary arteries, then these coronary arteries are designed to feed the heart itself. So if we put the front of the heart back in place, the blood vessel we see here coming out on the left side of the pulmonary trunk, between the pulmonary trunk and the left auricle, is the left coronary artery. It branches right here and the branch that continues down to feed the anterior aspect of the heart is the anterior interventricular branch. And the branch that continues on around the side of the heart here is the circumflex artery. Now, if we look at the right side of the pulmonary trunk, we have an artery that comes out between the pulmonary trunk and the right auricle. So this is the right coronary artery that passes posterior. Its branch on the side of the heart here is called the marginal branch. And then if we turn the heart around and we follow these blood vessels around, then we'll notice that the, that the circumflex artery comes around, the right coronary artery comes around, and that gives rise to a branch that goes down the posterior aspect of the heart, which is the posterior interventricular branch. So these are all the major uh, blood vessels that supply blood to the heart. Now, what we need to do is we need to recollect blood from the, the myocardium uh, that's been using all the oxygen out of it. So on the left side of the heart, we have a blood vessel referred to as the great cardiac vein. So the great cardiac vein is coming up here and then following the circumflex around to the back of the heart. We also have a vein that drains the right side of the heart here that follows the right coronary artery around. And so it's called the small cardiac vein. As we get posterior on the heart again, then we'll see the great cardiac vein leading into this structure. We'll see the small cardiac vein leading into this structure. And then this is the middle cardiac vein that runs along the posterior interventricular artery. And the middle cardiac vein, the great cardiac vein, and the small cardiac vein all dump into this large structure which is called a, the coronary sinus. And the coronary sinus is what brings blood back to the right atrium of the heart to get pumped around again. On the right side of the heart, the myocardium is fairly thin because it only pumps blood to the lungs. Left side of the heart, the myocardium is much thicker, pumps blood all over your body. So the weakest part in the heart is where it is down here in the lower part of the right ventricle. And so since the myocardium in this area is very, very thin, we actually have a band of muscle that runs across the right ventricle that prevents this from being overstretched. So this band of muscle we see right here is the moderator band. Now the heart itself has its own inherent pacemaking system. So that the heart isn't dependent upon your brain to actually contract and relax. And if you took a heart out of someone, it would beat for a while as long as it's got energy and oxygen. So what initiates this process is a area of excitatory myocardial tissue that we call a node. And so what initiates a cardiac cycle is the SA node, which we see where the superior vena cava is coming into the left atrium. When the SA node sends a depolarizing event, it crosses the atrial walls and eventually causes the atria to contract to force blood through these valves into the ventricle. When that, myo, when that excited myocardium, the depolarization, reaches the second node that we see at the interface uh, between the atria and the ventricle on the right side. So it's called a atrioventricular node or AV node. 
it fires and it's going to control the activity of the ventricle. So it's connected to a series of myocardial fibers that are conducting. So we can see that we have a little fiber pattern running through the top here from the AV node, which is called the bundle of Hiss, or atrial ventricular bundle. As it enters the inner ventricular septum, it branches. One stays on the right side, so it's called the right branch bundle. The other one goes down the left side of the heart, so it's called the left branch bundle. And as we'll see, we have small branches that come off of all of these which are referred to as Purkinje fibers. And so we have these Purkinje fibers that we can see that lead to the myocardium itself.